beautiful little unicorns and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time that you're on my channel, I'm Vanessa Samina and welcome to the fam. So as you guys know, I upload a weekly prediction every weekend. So that is exactly what this video today is about. You guys, I have four groups prepared for you and I would like you to pick one of these four groups intuitively. So just go with that first feeling, that gut instinct of yours in order to make the right choice for you. You guys, as usual, the timestamps will be down below in the description box. So after you've chosen your group, you can just click your corresponding timestamp and fast forward to your reading. And for any of you who are new to my channel, make sure that you tune into one of the readings, maybe even two if you feel like you resonate with two. And if you like my readings, found them insightful, uplifting, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. So yeah, you guys, regarding the groups, we have the green calcite, we have the skull site, we have the rhodonite, as well as the citrine. So if you need a minute to meditate on the four groups, feel free to pause the video right here and right now in order to do so. And yeah, otherwise, you guys, I wanna keep this intro very short, very to the point, so we can get straight into the readings about your next week. So I'm going to be starting off with the first group, which corresponds to the green calcite. Hello group number one and welcome to your reading about your upcoming week. So you chose the green calcite. So group number one, first and foremost, I want to talk to you about why you may have chosen the green calcite. So the green calcite is especially for those who find themselves in a forest all lost without a map, so to say. So I definitely want you to keep in mind that the heart wants what it wants and the mind wants what it thinks that the heart should want. So keep in mind that those are two very different things and that sometimes it's best to put away being rational and just sort of let your heart's desires win. So this stone is especially for Libras or for anybody who just feels like they need to give their heart a little win because they've just been rational and just thinking with their clear head and they just need to live life more to their heart's desires. So let's move further into your reading group number one. So we have a go with the flow, we have the peacock, we have the High Priestess, the King of Autumn, Justice, as well as the Queen of Summer. Okay, so group number one, first and foremost, we have the King of Autumn. So in the King of Autumn, I see very compassionate energy next week, accomplished, as well as grounded energy. So I see that everything is going to turn out just fine next week. I want you to know the projects will be able to be successful. You'll be able to seek out new possibilities when it comes to the earthly realms, when it comes to your job, financial opportunities, and just overall the mood that you're in is just so like carrying charismatic and so sort of captivating that it'll be easy for you to manifest and it'll be easy for you to sort of get things moving especially in the earthly realm so know that this is a good time to start new business ventures or maybe a completely new business and know that this is a very fruitful time for business deals to sort of you know strike agreements with people as you have this sort of confident charismatic air about you so moving forward in the high priestess I definitely see that that, um, you have to take time next week to reflect and um, also to not always take action on everything so especially when it comes to the emotional realms obviously you know we've spoken about the financial realms with your job etc that it is great for you to use this energy to your advantage but in the emotional realms when it comes to you and your spirituality your mental strength it is definitely more beneficial for you to you know just reflect not stress out and not take take action so don't react to everything if somebody you know tries you if somebody gets on your nerves don't react don't give it the time of the day make sure that you take time to focus on your spiritual gifts rather than letting you know all the noise around you dictate where your mind goes so I definitely want you to remember that um, nothing is hidden from the divine nothing is hidden from the universe so you have to truly make sure that all of your intentions are pure and all of your intentions intentions are being followed through in a very authentic way so obviously if you want to get rid of you know noise if you want to listen less to what is going on on the media or you know with people who are maybe kind of bugging you right now make sure that you make it very clear to the universe that you're not interested in that so for instance when you wake up in the morning 
Don't touch your phone for like the first hour, the first half hour. Do what you need to do and make sure that you set your day up for success. Make sure that you don't already fill your brain up with unnecessary information when it's at such a vulnerable state. Make sure that you ground yourself, you meditate if you have time, and you just get yourself in a positive space where if you wake up and see a you know negative message or something on the news that is upsetting, that it won't affect you throughout the day. So make sure that you build up that shield first thing in the morning next week in order to make sure that you set yourself up for great days all the time. In going with the flow, I see that what you must do is just let things happen. So maybe recently you've kind of been meddling with things or you always try and sort of like stick your nose in everybody's business or in all areas of your life where sometimes you just need to let things happen. So this is definitely meant to reiterate the fact that sometimes you need to just go with the flow. You need to let things happen at their own pace and you need to give things time and obviously you know not be so reactive as we already had in the high priestess so make sure that you focus on spiritual clarity on spiritual growth and focus on the fact that stillness that not needing to react to everything is true strength and is something that truly you know helps you spiritually then in the peacock i can see that next week is a week where you know confidence is a must where you have to know that you know you're worth it know that you're on a certain level that you do not want to allow people to bring you down from so definitely raise your standards definitely be very clear of the fact that you're worthy you're beautiful and you don't need to let anybody or society tell you otherwise. So I see that next week is really a week where you have to think about, you know, what it is that has ever made you feel inferior, what it is about, you know, the media or somebody or something that you've heard about yourself that made you feel bad. Because once you really dissect what the issue was or what really hurt you so much, you'll be able to move forward stronger and knowing that you won't let anything get you down anymore. In the Queen of Summer, I definitely see, um, that next week is a time of deep emotions, of heightened intuition, and that you can trust yourself and your intuition completely. So definitely be mindful and um, don't ignore your needs emotionally next week. Definitely know that um, giving and sort of very psychic energy is something that is activated for you next week. So if you've always felt like you have this psychic streak, if you've always felt like you have this deep inner knowing or wisdom, next week is a week where you will really feel it so it might show by for instance you being able to already foresee things happening or being able to already predict certain situations or if somebody's speaking to you already having like that sixth sense if you feel like they're not a hundred percent you know being truthful and telling you what's really up so I definitely see that um, you can trust it next week and it will be of some sort of advantage I see that um, fair decisions that is something that is essential you have to seek out balance and you you have to look at all the evidence before you make any decisions so as I said you know when it comes to the earthly realms when it comes to business etc next week is a great week for you to be starting things for you to be making decisions but review all of the evidence make sure that you see things from other people's points of view and make sure that you take time to look at all of the different aspects before you decide on how to move forward and you know the same goes for you emotionally so while I don't want you to take too much action while I want you to think very wisely before you act on an emotional level and with people I definitely also want you to review you know every single aspect I want you to look at everything from everybody's point of view because so often when we're in disagreements or in arguments we haven't put ourselves in the other person's shoe we haven't considered the other person's feelings and that is why often disagreements arise and that is why sometimes you know those lead to like heated arguments so make sure that you consider other people's feelings next week while you know re still remaining compassionate I mean after all you have the Queen of Summer in your reading you can't just you know totally forget your compassion and your loving side so yeah group number one and that is a reading that I received for you regarding your next week I hope you found it insightful and I will see you in my next reading Hello group number two and welcome to your reading about your next week. So you chose the skull site. So group number two, first and foremost, a little something about why you may have chosen this stone that sort of forms in like these needle-like little 
forms. I'm not sure if you can see, but it does. It's a very prickly kind of stone. So first and foremost, why you may have chosen this stone. So this stone is for anybody who sort of has sleepless nights, people who lay awake and are sort of worrying, worrying a lot about the future, about, about things that they can't change right now, and just people who need to really rethink their bedtime routine. So if you're self-sabotaging your sleep, or you feel like you're not sleeping well, and there are things that you could do, lavender oil for instance, um, that is who this stone is for. But maybe you just liked its appearance. Either way, let's move further into your reading about your next week. So group number two, we have the Battle of the Blues, we have Legends, we have the Tortoise, we have the Ace of Summer, the Five of Spring, as well as the Ace of Spring. Okay, group number two, we have the Ace of Summer in your reading. So I see that there's a new sort of emotional experience coming for you next week. Um, it may be like the first sort of sight of romantic love in a little while, or it may also be sort of just a renewed emotional experience in, in the romance bracket. So if you are in a relationship, you may have sort of this new experience, this new feeling where you feel like the love is rekindled, revamped. And um, I definitely see like there is like a rebirth of a relationship. And it could also be a relationship with yourself. It could also be the way you feel about yourself or just generally like a new relationship entering your life that allows you to awaken more parts of you, more parts of your spiritual gifts as well as more insights. So I definitely see that whatever is happening in your relationships next week, whoever enters your relationships next week has a sort of air of significance for you and is going to allow you to feel something new emotionally. Moving on, we have the Four of Summer which corresponds to the tortoise and I see that um, your responsibilities may distract you from noticing like what is going on for you next week. So I definitely see that a lot of the things that you've um, planned, a lot of the things that you've worked hard on, a lot of the gifts that you have naturally may be overlooked next week if you focus too much on you know all of your responsibilities right now. So I definitely see that you have to be open to um, looking more into any opportunities that come your way, looking more into yourself and all of the gifts that you're naturally gifted with. So maybe you feel like you have a psychic streak or like you're a really good singer or really good at drawing. Um, so definitely look more into that because being really busy can be so distracting from what we're naturally good at, what we're really good at um, without even needing to try and you know that can put us in a very like blue sort of state. So in the battle of the blues I definitely feel like next week at some point you may feel a little bit discouraged and a little bit down and that is why I brought up the fact that in the four of summer um, you may feel distracted. You know these distractions may be pulling you down unnecessarily. So make sure that all the distractions going on in the world, you don't allow them too close to your heart. Make sure that you definitely battle the blues if you feel like you have any blues. Take positive steps towards positive change and focus on what you're really good at. As in the four of summer, I definitely see that you can slowly start to harvest what you've sown. You can slowly start to you know, create more with what it is that you're good at. So focus on that, focus on the positive things because sometimes it is easier to focus on what isn't there or what isn't going so well and then we barely even notice you know how that is really impacting our life because whatever is happening up here is what fabricates around here so make sure that you keep things positive that you keep things light and going in a good direction so in the ace of spring we have the white tiger so I definitely see um, an amazing opportunity arising I definitely see that um, it may be like a surprise but either way you will want to leap forward you would want to pursue it. So in the Ace of Spring, I can see some sort of opportunity presenting itself. And in the Five of Spring, I see that um, you may sort of experience like a clash with somebody else. And if you feel like it's worth the energy, definitely make sure that you minimize the conflict. Make sure that you don't sort of make it bigger than it ever had to be. Make sure that you get your point across in a very diplomatic way, but without really hurting anybody's feelings. As you know, that will only sort of distract from everything in your life. That will only distract from this surprise, from this opportunity that I want you to leap forward to in the Ace of Spring, that I want you to truly be able to fully receive. So make sure that any clashes 
like really think about if you're not of the same opinion as somebody in your life, really make sure that you think like, is this really worth the headache? Is this really worth the argument? Or, you know, should I just let it go? So usually it's always best to let it go. As you know, you will come to notice if you speak to somebody um, older than you, if you speak to somebody who has more life experience, I mean, nine times out of 10, they'll tell you to let the subject go. They'll tell you that it's not worth it and that life is too short. So in legends, I definitely want you to be inspired by that. I definitely want you to look up to those who are older than you, those who have accomplished things that you wish and long to accomplish, and you know, see how do they live their life? What are their morning routines? How do they form themselves? How, how are they on a spiritual level? You know, really look up to the people who inspire you, really look up to what it is that they do on a daily basis because your routines and the things that you do every day shape your entire reality as well as your thought process, obviously, but your thoughts then manifest into actions and those actions shape your reality. So if you really want to focus on making changes in your reality, then it would be so beneficial for you to pick up a book of somebody who has accomplished amazing things and really, you know, look into what it is that they do every day. Because it is proven that, you know, the average human being reads about two to three books a year. Meanwhile, you know, the average CEO reads about one book a week. So make sure that you really focus on reading, focus on educating yourself, as that will help you thrive and go a lot further in life than if you waste that time with noise, with media, with people's opinions that in the end don't really make a difference to your life. So group number two, that is the reading that I received for you for your next week. I hope you enjoyed it and found it insightful and I will see you in my next video. Hello group number three and welcome to your reading about your next week. So you chose the Rodenite. So group number three, first and foremost, a little something about why you may have chosen the Rodenite. So the Rodenite is especially for those who are a Sagittarian. So if you are a Sagittarius, hello, hi, this reading has been specially made for you and it is also for people who feel like like, you know, what the hell should I do with my life universe? Like, tell me what to do with my life. For all of you who need to sort of follow your heart, for all of you who need to stop trying to people please and really get down to the nitty gritty of what it is that you want. So maybe you've been lately a little bit confused or you've been unsure of what you want or you're kind of letting society's pressure get to you. Either way, you know, that may be a reason why you chose the Rodenite or the fact that it is just a beautiful mineral. But let's move further into your reading to figure out what is is happening for you next week. Okay, so we have Face Your Fears, the Dragon. We have Life Experience, the Empress, the Prince of Winter, as well as the Emperor. So yeah, you guys don't need to butcher me in the comment section. I finally learned how to say emperor instead of saying emperor. Okay, when you speak more than one language, it can get confusing. <laughs> Anyways, moving into your reading about your next week. So I definitely see that facing your fears is something that you're going to have to do at some point next week alongside with discovering your courage. So the dragon stands for courage, obviously. The dragon is such a mighty mystical being that seems to have no natural enemies, nothing to be afraid of but at the same time it's super courageous and you know fights against superhumans in all of the fairy tales no matter how strong or what kind of superpowers those superhumans may have so definitely take that courage from the dragon and make sure that you remember that when you have to face your fears next week when something comes up next week where you're like oh like I don't want to deal like this scares me just do it and it could be something as little as facing that pile that is sitting on your desk, on your chair, that pile of clothes that you have not been able to clean up. It could be as simple as, you know, doing the mail that you haven't done in forever. That could that causes fear, okay? I know this from experience, like those things can cause fear and anxiety and can make you feel overwhelmed. But just be courageous and think to yourself, you know what, sooner or later this has to be done anyway, sooner or later I have to face this. I might as well do it now, get it over with and move on with life. And that is how you stop procrastination, you know, just think to yourself, will, will I get around this? If you're not gonna get around it, you might as well do it now and free up that headspace for positivity and things that have nothing to do with the fact that this is still lying around or this still needs to be done. 
In life experience, I definitely see that there are a lot of important changes coming to your life that will require you to take action. I see that you should not hesitate to move in a new direction and to know exactly what is right for you. So as I mentioned in the raw tonight, you have to go with your heart's desires, not with society's desires. And you know, the same thing is in life experience. You have to follow what is right for you and you have to be unafraid to go in a new direction. So obviously in facing your fears, we could have something as little as that pile of clothes that you've been afraid to dissect or you know it could be something bigger going into a completely new life direction and needing a lot of that dragon courage to go down that path but you have it it's in you you just need to tap into it and you have to remember that the worst thing that can happen is that you reshape and change your path again and you end up not going down that path anyways so moving forward in the empress we have also the angora rabbit so i definitely see you channeling a lot of feminine energy I see you needing to hop into action just like the Angora rabbit and just to take action in a way that you know shows courage as already mentioned and to use your natural creativity to bring you know forth prosperity and success into your life because the only way you can really be successful is by allowing you know your creativity allowing everything that has been given to you to work for you so when you're trying to be somebody else or you're trying to to, you know use skills that are not naturally you then life can be difficult and it can be hard to manifest it can be hard to truly channel things into your life that you want so know that all your natural creativity everything that has naturally been given to you will naturally draw the things to you that you need and that resonate with you so moving forward in the impair you know we have the mouse i see that structure organization pre-planning is something that you should be doing next week so maybe you started at some point journaling and then you gave it up or you know that you need to write more things down or you need to plan more so definitely focus on that next week and don't be afraid to take on a leadership role don't be afraid to you know be that person telling like delegating tasks and telling people what to do because as long as you plan as long as you write it down and you're not afraid of that extra little five minutes of work you can accomplish great things and you have leadership qualities you have wisdom because sometimes especially when you're young and you're sort of wise beyond your years or you're doing things in life that usually people do who are a lot older than you you can sometimes feel like that crowd of people can't come to you because you're a lot younger and because you feel like well what do i have to say what wisdom do i have to share i'm only half this person's age like i'm just a little kid so i definitely don't want you to think that way and i want you to know that what you have to say is important and what you have to say is of interest to a lot of people because a lot of times we feel like oh well older people aren't really interested but they are they are really interested in what you know the younger generation thinks so definitely share your thoughts and take leadership and don't be afraid to play that sort of authoritative role or to be like the expert in the room. Then in Princess of Winter, I definitely see that um, you may have sort of like an intellectual challenge. You may have a situation where um, the princess of winter is not necessarily your friend as she is very logical, truthful, but at the same time, undiplomatic, okay? She can be too upfront and she can say things in a way that hurts people's feelings. And especially when you're not agreeing with somebody or when you're having like this feeling that you can't come to a solution with someone, that you can't come to an agreement. It can be sometimes hard to stay diplomatic and to continue trying to spare somebody's feelings. So know that if there is a way to resolve things, try and do it as quickly as possible, whether you get your way 100% or not. And know that if useful information is presented to you, just take it, be grateful, and don't be bothered by the messenger. So if somebody has been bugging you for a long time and you feel like you just wanna like tell them what's up and you just wanna be like, hey, actually you've really been bothering me, don't bother if they work with you and you know they provide you with information that is useful or that is good or you know you can just stay out of their way I see that that is the best solution for you next week as you have bigger fish to fry you have other things to do there is no point in these little petty arguments so to say because you know your life is moving in so much more of a interesting direction to really give any conflicts with other people any time of the day 
So yeah, group number three, that is the reading that I received for you regarding your next week. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it insightful and I will see you in my next reading. Hello group number four and welcome to your reading about your next week. So you chose the citrine. So group number four, first and foremost, I wanted to speak to you about why you may have chosen the citrine and what sort of meaning the citrine may have for you next week. So first and foremost, obviously the citrine is a beautiful stone, it is a beautiful mineral and it is actually a heat treat amethyst for all of you who didn't know. So moving for, forward into the meaning of the citrine. So the citrine is for anybody who has a big dream, for anybody who has to have things but doesn't have the means to get them. So the citrine is here for you to know that you have to start manifesting properly as that is the only way that you can get abundance into your life. So if you feel like your manifesting skills have been on the weaker side or you feel like by now you should have more abundance in your life, that may be exactly why you've chosen in the citrine. But let's move further into your reading to figure out what's happening for you next week. So we have resilience, we have knowledge, we have the five of summer, the chariot, the nine of winter, as well as ego. Okay, group number four. First and foremost, I want to talk to you about the chariot. So in the chariot, I see that um, focus as well as determination is on your side next week. I see that turning sort of everything into gold is something that you're able to do. I see that, you know, you have to mobilize all your forces and point them in one direction. Even if right now some of your forces are pointing this way and some of your forces are pointing the other way, you have to mobilize them, bring them together and make sure that you're pointing forwards in order to properly, you know, make the most of the energy that you have next week. So I definitely see determination being there for whatever reason, you know, maybe you have something that you want to do for yourself financially or for somebody else, or you just want to prove to yourself that, hey, I can do it. And you know, that is amazing energy to have, especially if, you know, as we have the five of summer, if you focus on recovering from any little difficulties that life may have thrown at you in the past and focusing on, you know, positively moving forward and accomplishing positive changes because it can be easy to be sort of shook and scared depending on, you know, what has happened to you prior to the situation. You can be afraid to try again because the first time you tried, you were sort of beat down. So don't allow that to happen and know that resilience is something that you can build. Resilience is something that will help you to rise above tribulations and resilience is something that you need next week. So I definitely feel like while a lot is on your side, a lot is also expected of your group number four. So I definitely feel like you need a hard shell. You need a tough skin next week. As you know, you may be tested. You may be tested for the universe to really figure out, can this person stay positive or is this person going to crack as soon as there's just like a little obstacle in the way. So definitely know that any obstacles are just here as lessons. Any obstacles are just here to teach you that, you know, being strong will in the end allow you to, to be rewarded by the universe. So take any obstacles as a new challenge and not, you know, as a new huge sort of thing that you have to overcome because the bigger you make obstacles, the bigger they really become when usually they're not that big of a deal, especially when it comes to, for instance, procrastination. So the more you procrastinate, the more you like talk these little things into being something bigger than they truly are. So one thing that I, for instance, have procrastinated in the past is paying bills and not because I don't want to pay them or because I wasn't able to, but because I didn't want to log in, type in the whole number of the bill and the amount and you know, the person that it's going to because for me, that was just, I just procrastinated that because I just found that it was, you know, too much work. I just didn't want to do it. You know, whatever reason we have for procrastination, you have to remind yourself that if it's something that takes less than like three or five minutes to do, just do it instantly because the amount of time that you spend procrastinating and reminding yourself like, I need to do this, but I'm going to procrastinate it till the last day possible. The energy that you waste on that is crazy. but you know, I've been guilty of that too. I'm not procrastination free, so I totally understand the struggle, but the less we procrastinate, the more time we have and the more free headspace we have for positive thoughts as well as mobilizing our forces to move in one direction. So moving forward, I definitely see in the nine of winter that 
a lot of the worries, a lot of the procrastinating doesn't have to do with the fact that you know you have really big issues in your life, but just the fact that you're making them a lot bigger in your head. So I definitely feel like group number four, one thing that I want you to focus on next week is to make sure that you remember that if the issues are not that big, don't allow your head to make them big. Don't allow yourself to sort of cloud your mind with all of these scary scenarios and with you making like little things really big unnecessarily because it's just a waste of time. Because it's just a waste of your precious headspace. And in knowledge, I can tell that you don't really have time for that. In knowledge, I can tell that you are destined to learn a lot of new things next week. So that could be by reading on your own, by studying on your own, or you know, the fact that maybe Maybe you're in a course or you have a course at work where you're going to be you know learning a lot of things where you're going to be taking a lot of new information in so really you know coming to terms with the fact that um, you have the power to stop worrying and you have the power to let go of fear and to allow everything to be okay coming to terms with that will allow you to learn with ease it will allow you to move forward with ease and to truly absorb a lot more of the new knowledge and fun fact for group number four for. Um, when you read something, when you learn something, within the first 48 hours, you forget 80% of it, 80%. So make sure that you don't make that number even higher by having you know, such a busy mind and such a clouded mind that when you're actually seeking knowledge, when you're actually you know, receiving knowledge, make sure that you set yourself up to be a dry sponge and not a sponge that is already soaked full of worries, if you know what I mean. And in Ego, in the Siamese cat, I definitely see that one thing that you have to be careful about next week is to not focus so much on material wealth and material things as there are other things going in your life that are of a lot more value so group number four obviously you know you may be somebody who loves material things who loves luxury who loves the good life and that is completely fine but I definitely see that you know next week it is best to not think about those things don't think about you know your next large purchase don't think about you know the next luxury item that you would like to own or that you want to work towards because the clarity isn't there the clarity is not there on making the right decision I see that your mind is clouded your mind has you know all of these thoughts swirling around of what social media would want you to spend your money on when it comes to the material realm so make sure that next week you don't purchase anything luxury you don't purchase anything much material go on a you know no buy week don't buy anything but what you need which is food for instance or gas and leave any luxury purchases for a different week as I see that you will make better decisions at a better time and you will not have these impulse feelings at a different time. So group four, make sure that you stay away from luxury purchases next week and make sure that you focus more on knowledge as well as lifting yourself up. So group number four, that is the reading that I received for you for your next week. I hope you enjoyed it and found it insightful and I will see you in my next reading.